Income Tax 2021-2022 Tax Software IRA Distributions. Get ready to get refunds to the max. Diving into Income Tax 2021-2022. Here we are in our Lacert Tax software. You don't need access to the Lacert Tax software or any tax software to follow along, but you might want the Form 1040, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Software helping us out to enter the data in different scenarios much more quickly, jumping on over to the tax forms to see the impact of those scenarios. We're starting off with the single filer, Adam Smith, living in Beverly Hills, 90210, 100,000 at the W-2 wages, Standard deduction twelve thousand five fifty to get us the taxable income eighty seven four fifty, which we can mirror in our accounting or tax equation for the income here. We've got the standard deduction. There's the eighty seven four fifty. We then rely on the tax software to calculate the tax on page two, which is in this case the fifteen fifteen. So we've got the fifteen fifteen here fifteen oh one five going to go back on over to page one back up to page one we're looking at the ira distributions as we do this we think of two sides on the ira us putting money into the ira which we often have a tax benefit on we'll talk about that later this being us taking money out of the ira often in terms of when we're at retirement and then it might be something that we have to include in income because we're pulling the money out for the use at that point in time, we got the benefit of possibly a tax benefit when we put the money in. So let's take a look at the actual form. This you might get a form something like this, or you should from your financial institution if there's a if there's going to be a distribution from an IRA. This is going to be the uh, 1099R. So we've got the boxes here. We've got the gross distribution and the taxable amount. These top two boxes are going to be the primary two boxes you're you're going to be concerned with. Those and Box number seven it is often going to be an indication of the distribution type that it has. And usually they're going to be fairly straightforward distribution types. But if you have any unusual distribution, you can look at the instructions, which you can find on the IRS website. And it'll break down you know, the different codes that could be in there to, to list different types of distribution. We'll talk a little bit more about them as we go. Other items, you could have the capital gain. Uh, included in box 2A, the federal income tax withheld. Box 4 uh, is fairly common or could be more common than you would think for other types of incomes like interest or something like that. Because if you're talking about someone who is retired, they're no longer using their W-2 income, for example, to have the withholdings. So oftentimes, if all their money is coming from uh, distributions, then they might have their withholdings coming out of the 1099-R. Similar situation with like a W-2 with the federal withholdings. We then have to put that in the withholdings area. Employee contributions, designated Roth IRA contribution, Roth contributions, uh, net unrealized appreciation in employers' securities. With the distribution code is important whether or not it's an ira sep or simple could check that off to determine uh, it as an ira sep or simple and then eight the other your percentage of total distributions total employee contributions and then the state withholdings which you could have state withholdings as well uh, in a similar way as you would see with like a w-2 type of income so the primary two boxes we're looking at are the gross distributions and that's going to be the distributions that are there. The taxable amount represents the amount of the gross distributions that are taxable. So oftentimes, if all the distributions are taxable, so for example, under a normal kind of condition, you have someone that's going to be pulling the money out uh, after the retirement age, and there's going to be that taxable component that will be involved. These two numbers might then be the same, and you might have a distribution code down here indicating that it's a normal distribution. So in that instance, if I go back on over, we're going to go to the first tab. We might then say that the the age then, if it's a normal distribution, we would expect them to be in uh, retirement age. So they're going to be usually older in that case. And then we'll go into the distribution. So I'm going to say we have a distribution. I'm going to just call it IRA1 here for the distribution. And then I'm going to give the code here. So I'm going to say the distribution code, if it was a normal distribution, would be a 7 generally. And that's what you would find in this box in the code and if you don't know what that code is you can look at the instructions and then you're going to say okay in the instructions we've got the code number 
seven here. So this is box seven, number seven. We've got the normal distribution. So that would be the normal distribution. And then we would expect most likely to have the same number in both box one and two A. So box one and two A. So going back on over, I'm gonna say, let's start with a thousand. Our traditional starting point is gonna be the thousand and a thousand in both sides. And then I'll go to my forms here, going on over to the forms. And so now we can see we have over here box one, the 100,000, and then the the uh, the box down here, it's, it went into the pension. I gotta go back on over to the detail and I'm gonna check off the box up top, going back into my income. I'm gonna check off that it was an, an IRA, SEP, or SIMPLE. IRA, SEP, or SIMPLE, which you would see in, if I scroll back on over the item here, so right here, that's gonna give the proper category that's gonna be pulling over. So I'm gonna go back on over and say, okay, back to the forms. So there we have it. So now we've got the IRA distributions and we got the taxable amount of the 1,000. That's gonna be increasing us to the 101 in the total. So I'm gonna go then to, let's go to the 1040 because we, we're over here on the 1040 SR because I changed the age. So, but I think the 1040 is easier to look at. So if I go to the 1040, now we have an adjustment to our standard deduction because of the age that I changed as well. So I'm at the 101 and I've got this adjustment of the 14,250. So if I go back on over, I'm gonna say, okay, let's add the income, which is going to be, so we'll add it to the income section. So I'm gonna to go to the income and I'm gonna go down here and say that it's, I'm gonna put it in the same place as like the W-2 income. I've added distributions from IRA or pension in a similar fashion here. So we just got our information leaving a little, a bit of space because we might have multiple items, like we might have multiple W-2s. And then I'm gonna be adding those up, starting with the first one at 1,000 pulling that on over to the first page. There's our 101 line one of the income. And then the standard deduction needs to go up because they're past the retirement age. So I'm gonna do that by saying this equals the standard here plus the 1007. And that brings us up to that 14,250. So they got the 101, 14,250. So here 101, 14,250, getting us to the 86,750 on the net income, 86,750. Let's go to page number two, page number two, where we have the tax calculation at the 14,874, and we'll populate that here, 14,874. So there we have that. Now you could also have withholdings, which is quite likely if you're talking about someone that is retired on the form, that would just be right here, similar to a W-2 kind of information, easy to do the data input for, similar fashion to the W-2, but note that it might be a little bit more difficult. In other words, you might have some tax planning that would be involved for people that are retired because they don't have the W-4. They might have multiple places where they have distributions. So you gotta determine how much should be distributed and so on. And and if you have multiple different just places to make the withholdings on, which ones to make the withholdings on. And if they don't have the distributions, then you might have estimated payments. So there could be some more planning going on, but the data input is usually pretty straightforward once it has been done. And you're just entering the data, we just put the federal withholding, let's say it was 150. Going back on over to the forms, that's gonna be on page two. There's the 150 that was paid. We can mirror that on our tax return by going over to the payment side. That's gonna be mirroring this bottom line, the bottom line. And I'm gonna just add estimates for payments, not estimates. So I'm gonna put it up top with the W-2 or withholding payments. And so if you're talking about uh, younger people, you're probably having W-2s here. If you're talking about older people, you might not have many W-2s and you might be talking more about, you know, pension plans and retirement plan type stuff. 150 adding up for the total 150 on down below that pulling on over to the first page of the form 10-4-D where we've got the 150 down below. So we had the 14874 on the tax, and then the 150, checking that to the tax return, 14874, the 150. They also added a penalty here. So we'll, we won't deal with the penalty right now for the late payment penalty. So there is that. Now note, you could also have multiple items here that are feeding in. It's quite common to have multiple items feeding in. So we could go back on over and say, well, what if we had two of these things here? What if that happened? I'm gonna say the normal distribution code is number seven. It's gonna be an IRA. So we'll say it's an IRA. And let's say that was 2000 and the taxable amount 2000. 
and pulling that on over to the forms to the forms now we're at the 3000 up top which of course we can simply mirror in our soft in our excel worksheet as well by going to the income line and saying now we got another one for 2000 bringing it up to 3000 page 1 103 14 250 standard deduction 88 750 taxable income there it is line number two or page number two line number 16 15 327 15 327 so there we have that it's going back on over so that looks good now if you let's let's go back to the original now let's go back to the o to the g original let's delete the second one get that out of there get out of there get out and then let's say that let's say that this was a one in this code that's what we don't want to see early distribution no known exception that's so so this is people do this oftentimes and you and you want to try to advise people not to do this to take money out if there's no exception because then you'll be subject to the penalty and you'll have to pay interest pay taxes on it so remember even if they are not uh it, even if they have an excuse to take it out even if it's a normal distribution whatever the distribution reason you're going to pay taxes on it because you defer the taxes when you put it in but you want to avoid any added penalties on taking the money out and so if there's no reason to take it out you take it out before the retirement age let's change the retirement age so that they take it out so it take makes sense let's make it 78 and so now we're going to go back on over and say now what happened k paso what happened we got the 100,000 we got the 101 and now they're at the 12550 because they took the money out and they're under the retirement age at this point in time there's the 88450 and then page number 2 we got this $100 other taxes including self-employment tax schedule 1 and so on let's see where that was put we're going to go on schedule 2 schedule number 2 there's the additions to an IRA or other tax favored accounts we're attaching form 5329 let's check that one out 5329 is the additional taxes on qualified pensions and other tax favored accounts so it's an added tax that's being tacked on that's what we want to avoid doesn't seem too big here because we're talking about a small amount that was taken out but if you take a large amount out that can be a painful tax that can be a painful tax and we're trying to avoid the pain the iris likes to be cause pain don't let them fool you with the refunds they're trying to hit you with the stick and what you're trying to do is avoid it we're trying to avoid the stick so if i go back on over say let's bring this back to the o to the g we're going to say this is back to 1000 and this would be to their before retirement age at the 12 550 then and then we've got the added tax down here which would be somewhere in this area tax and refund so we've got let's say uh, tax credits other taxes so we've got other taxes let's put it there I've got to sell for additional taxes let's put it in the additional taxes one right here so additional taxes alternative minimum tax self-employment tax IRA so I'm going to put I'm just going to put another here you might not have this stuff up above because I mess with my worksheet but I'm just going to put one cell for the additional tax which was the distribution which I could do it this way with a formula I'm going to say it's equal to that distribution I had times the penalty which I think is 10 percent so there's the hundred dollar penalty that pulls in then to here so there's the hundred dollars bringing the tax up to the 15 427 15 427 so let's mirror this again we're at the 101 12 550 88 450 page numero uno so we've got the 88 450 and then page number two letter the software calculate the tax at the 15 255 15 255 the hundred dollars then brings it up to the 15 355 and then we paid 150 so that brings it up to the 15 355 there it is now the other thing you might see is a rollover a rollover and so if i roll it over then 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 i didn't take it out so i i don't i'm not subject to the penalty or the tax but you might get an information return so it might just be an information return and the rollover often designated and here in box seven 
with a G, I believe, a G, I believe. So we're going to go back on over and say this This is a G there. And you can always look at the instructions to get more detail on, on those. So I'm going to say they still took it out before the retirement age, but they didn't actually take it out. They rolled it over into another IRA. It's still under the umbrella of a retirement plan. And I didn't actually get the money. So we still should be good in that case. So for example, you might you might want to take this money. And if you work at a new job or something like that, you might try to see if you can roll it over into another plan that's under the umbrella of a retirement plan so that you don't have multiple you know, of these accounts out there and you can kind of consolidate them without having to take the money out and be charged a penalty and taxes on it. So if I was to do that, then notice it designates it as a rollover and it says it's, it's a non-taxable amount. And notice if I was to do that too, I wouldn't have anything in the taxable amount and I wouldn't have anything in the federal income tax here and that means I, and there would be something in box one but not in box two you would think and therefore there would be no federal withholding as well so now it's just an informational thing we're back to the first point just showing that here that it was a rollover now if you had a legitimate reason to take the money out before the retirement age and you could look you can look up like a list of those reasons or rationales then you got some reasons down here exceptions to the 10 percent tax age automatic enrollment correct distribution death disability uh, domestic relations education so on and so forth and if you have questions about these if you're tight on cash because no often at times this happens when people are tight on cash and they're like well wait a second i've got a ton of money that's in a retirement plan of some kind an ira or something like that can't i take it out well, you can, but you'd be subject to penalties possibly on it on top of the fact that you'll have to pay taxes on it. So the taxes, it's fair, right? It's fair that you kind of have to pay taxes on it because you got to put it in tax-free. You got the tax benefit when putting it in. What you're trying to avoid is the added hit of the penalties. So what you want to do in that case is talk to the broker and uh, I mean, talk to yeah, talk to your your financial institution and see if you if you have any of these qualifying factors that possibly could allow you to take the money out early. But you want to make sure to talk to the financial institution so that they can put the appropriate code into the 1099B so that when the IRS gets this information, they have they have the proper code here in line in the. 1099 i'm sorry not the 1099b the 1099r i'm looking at the wrong 1099 the proper code and the distribution on line number seven so that it makes things go easy and even if you have the proper code for an early distribution note that you'll still be subject to the income tax you won't if it's a rollover if it's a rollover then you didn't really pull the money out and you don't have any tax on it. It's kind of like keeping it in the same account because it's within another account that's under the umbrella. But if you take it out and use it, even if you have an excuse to take it out and use it, then you'd still be paying tax on it, but you're avoiding hopefully the added penalty would be the name of the game. That's what they call the game. If you looked at the, at the box, the top of the box, that's the name on it because that's the name of the game.